Good morning, Mystic and Dave Lipinski. May God bless you always. During the Easter season, we go through the Acts of the Apostles for our first reading, both during the weekend and during the weekday. And the first half of Acts is primarily about Peter and the early church in Jerusalem. The second half emphasizes more Paul and his missionary journeys, such as our reading this morning, where Paul is speaking to the people of Athens. Now, when Paul came into a town, he'd speak in the synagogue and he'd speak in house churches, but he often went in the public forum and just would start preaching the good news to anybody he would see or know. And Athens is a particular situation because Athens and Greece itself was the height of classical knowledge and sophistication. These are the rich, these are the smart, these are the ones who know everything about the world. And to be honest, many of the people in Athens really reject Paul because it doesn't make sense to them. Why would somebody risk their life? Why would somebody die? And how could somebody raise from the dead? So though Paul made converts, the more sophisticated there thought, who is this guy? What can he tell us? He has no education. Well, that's a message that can go through the ages. And the saint we celebrate today, St. Bernardine of Siena, is a similar to what Paul was. Now, Bernadine's born in the late 14th century, just after Catherine of Siena dies. And he grows up in Siena, a fairly rich town, in a fairly affluent family. But the Black Death is going through the area, and actually one of his earliest experiences was serving in a hospital during the plague. Now, thankfully, he didn't die from the plague, but though he found afterwards that he was very tired all the time, but he decided to become a priest. He became a Franciscan too. And once he was ordained, the Franciscan order told him, go out and preach the good news to the world. And that's what he did. And he spent the rest of his life traveling up and down the Italian peninsula, preaching the good news. In fact, he's considered one of the patrons of Italy and called the apostle to Italy. But he wouldn't go out, he would come into churches and he would go into monasteries. But most of the time he did his preaching in the marketplace. He'd show up in a town, He'd find a place, he'd stand up and he'd start preaching for maybe an hour at a time, day after day, bringing the good news and also by how he lived his life. Now it became very popular. In fact, some cities looked forward to him showing up just because they could profit from all the people who would come in to hear him. After a time, he was offered to be a bishop three different times. He turned it down because he felt his ministry was to proclaim the good news. And he continued to do that. But he wasn't always popular. At one point in time, when he climbed the pulpit to speak, it collapsed because somebody had saw the legs off ahead of time to keep him from preaching. He got up, stood on a pile of lumber, and continued to preach. In a more serious manner, three times people claimed he was a heretic to the Pope and asked him to be silenced. In each case, the Holy Father at that time said, no, continue to preach the good news, which he did. He did throughout his life. Now that's a message to us also, because though most of us will never be priests or Franciscans, we're all called to preach the good news by what we say and as importantly by what we do. And for most of us, we won't do that preaching in a church. We'll do it in the marketplace. We have to go out where we live, with whom we live, and with whom we interact, and always proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ even though to many people it doesn't make sense, it doesn't sound sophisticated, it sounds very basic and actually to many people foolish, but not to those of us who believe in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So as you go into the marketplace and you proclaim the good news, take care and remember a quote from a Franciscan founder, St. Francis of Assisi, who said, proclaim the gospel always, if necessary, use words. May God bless you and keep you all the days of your life.